Hi everyone, I'm Greg from the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. And today I've got something really neat to share with you, and that's the Cutie Tech X Smart 3. This is a 3D printer, and me being totally new to the 3D world, I'm going to share my experience with you through beginner's eyes on getting this unboxed, set up, and by the end of the video, getting our first print started. I'm pretty excited to be able to share some diverse content on the laser channel where I'm going outside of the box of just lasers and getting into some 3D printers. 3D printers have interested me for quite a long time, but I was always a little bit overwhelmed by all the technology that goes into them. I've also watched some other YouTubers, and while they've got excellent content, they definitely know what they're talking about, but some of the things that they talked about were a little bit over my head, and that's where I got a little bit overwhelmed. So for this video, I've got the beginner goggles on because I've got a little bit of experience with these. I've been around professionals who work with the high-end models of these, so I've got a little bit of a glimpse of what makes these things work. For this video though, let's get this box opened up and check out the contents inside. As you can tell, I've already opened this up. I couldn't really contain myself to wait until actual video day. Plus I wanted to see what's inside because these things are definitely really cool and very well packaged. Once I've got the top cover off here, we'll take a look that we're greeted by. I always like to see the manual on the top the USB drive underneath. There's a spool of sample filament and then various tools here, power cable. And I had to look this up in the manual off camera. This is the, uh, the holder for the spool because that is really how new I am that when I look at all of this stuff, some of it's not familiar to me. And I think the best way to get the rest of this out is to gently tip this up on end and actually take it out upside down. And I saw at the very bottom of the box, maybe the camera will see in there. With the bag off the machine, we can see just how large this machine really is. Before this arrived, I did go on the website and I did geek out a little bit on some of the technical specifications on this. And don't worry for all of you watching, I will have a link to this machine in the description down below. When I was looking online, it had the build area of about 170 millimeters to 175 and 180, depending on if it was the X, Y, or Z axes. And Actually having the machine in front of me, seeing just how large it is, how heavy it is, it's a very stable platform, and I'm definitely gonna enjoy building some 3D models off of this. I'll give a quick spin here. Of course, we've got the front, and we've got the side, and if you're able to see through the window uh, without any glare, you'll see that everything is still packaged up. On the back side here, we'll see that there is a fan vent and that is for the overall enclosure here. And while this isn't a climate controlled heated environment for the build process, it is totally enclosed and that is a step up from being an open air 3D printer. And while I am new at 3D printers, I do know the best thing that you could have is a temperature controlled enclosure. It makes for the best, smoothest models without any of the little rigid lines as the 3D printer is doing its thing. The models up from this one do have that feature, but this has the next best thing, and that is an enclosure that does have a vent fan on there to kind of keep the temperature somewhat stable. The big thing that this really does is that it will not be affected by any wind gusts or doors opening and closing in the shop here. If the air conditioning kicks in, if a heater kicks in, this will slow down that temperature change into the build area, still resulting in much better build quality than simple open air enclosures. For now, I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm gonna remove all the contents from this top tray. Again, we've got the manual, 
the power cable, this glue stick that was in the bottom styrofoam tray. And we've got a putty knife here. I took a look at this. This does have a blunted edge. So if you're working on this with your kids, know that if they reach for this right away, mine at least doesn't have a sharp edge on it just yet. Of course, this is the spool holder for the included filament that comes with it. And lastly, there's a little uh, accessory tool kit, a screwdriver, some spare screws, a spare fuse, which is nice, but hopefully we're not going to have to use that. And there's also this tube with a thin little wire in it, and that is to unclog the nozzle should I get any contaminants on my PLA filament. I can use this tool to punch out or remove any of those contaminants. Also in this bag is a spare brass nozzle. There's already one installed on the machine and it's nice to know that there's a spare one should I run into any jams on anything, quite literally. This machine also has a number of different nozzles available from QD Tech depending on what type of filament you're using with the machine. So this machine is not limited to just PLA, although it is one of the preferred materials to use with this particular model. And lastly, but most importantly, is the USB drive that's also in this top cover. I highly recommend taking a look at this on the computer. There's usually files on here, and I always like to copy all the files onto the computer. That way, if I'm running the machine and I have a question about something, usually the a uh, full manual that's found on these, I've already got it on my computer, making it very convenient. Following the manual, I'm all set to power up the machine and the on-screen touch screen will guide me through the rest of the process of removing any tie straps and screws, locking everything down to keep it safe during shipping and transport. The internal framework consists of an core XY system We'll take a look at that a little bit closer. And here on the Z axis, there are two precision metal guides with the bearings to match. And in the middle is the adjustment lead screw. This of course is the left side and the right side gets the same treatment. We'll see there's a carbon fiber guide rod and that is to reduce weight to increase the acceleration of the hot melt head. And tucked behind the hot melt head on both the left side and the right side is another guide rod for the Y axis. The full color touchscreen measures a nice three and three quarters inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall, providing ample room to provide a lot of information and plenty of space yet for any buttons. Let's take a quick fly around here. We'll see that we've got an active readout of the hot melt head, the build tray. By the way, these are currently in standby and it has the core XY system. This is the speed that it'll be accelerating at. And this is based off of the clipper processor. That's going to be the firmware that actually runs the machine itself. And I go down one menu screen here. We'll see that there are some built in program models already in here. In fact, I think this one is the little tugboat. There it is. So it's pretty neat. It gives me a little photo of what it's going to look like. Um, it's going to tell me the build time, how many grams of PLA filament it's going to use along with the length of the filament. So that is definitely pretty cool. We'll be checking that out in just a minute. There's also these other models here. Um, I did put the USB drive in the side of the machine and that's this folder here. And when I go into the test file, again, it's gonna be an exact duplicate of what we just looked at that's already on the machine itself. And I'll back out of here. And by the way, this touchscreen is very snappy and it is very responsive. Going to the next menu here, we can manually index the machine around. I can click over here and this is what I would use to load or unload new filament into the machine. If I arrow over one more time, we can redo the auto bed leveling or the input shaper. Uh, input shaper, by the way, what that does is it goes out and it purposely unstables or vibrates the motors so that as the machine is running around, if it hits one of those frequencies, 
that gets the machine vibrating, which results in poorer quality prints, it will start avoiding those speeds and frequencies, resulting in a much smoother, better build. I can back out of here or just go on to the next menu system. And here is the very first menu system on a newly powered up machine, just takes you through what language you want. I can arrow over to the next system here if I wanted to reboot or I can also click on about and it will give me more details about what software versions are running this machine. This all looks pretty cool. I'm going to go back to the folder here and pick this little tugboat here and I'll reset up some cameras and I'll cue in some nice relaxing music and we'll watch a time lapse of this little tugboat being built. When this started running, I was truly amazed at when it was speeding through white space or areas where it didn't have to put any material out, just how fast this head moved on this machine. And I have no experience with a Core XY system machine, and I never knew that they ran this fast. My previous experience of being around 3D printers was several years ago, uh, at my main career position that I retired from, but that was an industrial machine that cost many more times as this did, but it moved at about half the speed. So this is absolutely incredible. Let's take a closer look at this tugboat. See if we'll keep this guy in focus here. When I did this build, I went for speed over quality just because I want to get this video out to you as soon as possible, but the sides are still pretty smooth and all the detail on here looks really good when we can catch some of the, uh, the light off of it. I know it's uh, black and maybe not the best uh, filament to use to show you in this video, but it's what came with the machine. I didn't even realize that there's even a little uh, steering wheel inside the cab here. I'll take a look underneath here. I'm absolutely amazed with the speed, the precision, and the build quality out of this QD Tech XSmart 3 machine. This model series, by the way, the XSmart 3, this is the base model in this family of machines. So there's two more levels of machines above this one. Those machines get larger build areas, they move to a climate controlled enclosure, and the head flows filament even that much faster. For right now though, I'm still in amazement with this entry level starter model that I was supplied by QD Tech. Again, big thank you for them. And I hope that you'll join me in future videos as I go out on the internet and find some build models of various sizes, of different models of different types of things, some airplanes, some movie figures, and build them up on here and just allow you to sit back, relax, and watch a nice time lapse of this machine making a 3D print. Until then, if you like this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of those things 
really helps the channel out, but more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.